Good morning, people. Here we have a Perzo 308 2008. Um, we have a deep pollution system fault and a engine management light on there. It shows flashing in the video. I don't know why, but they're not actually flashing in real life. Um, so the first of all diagnostic we need to do the diagnostic port in a 308 is here goes this rubber mat like this so just lift it up pull it out and there is the 16 pin OBD into which we will plug our diagnostic machine and hopefully extract some fault codes and have a look what's up with this thing. Okay, so we have done the diagnostic and we have a whole load of faults here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now that doesn't mean that the car's got 10 problems. So, EGR valve learning, EGR valve learning, EGR valve circuit flow, EGR repeat raw signal, EGR valve circuito, much, so circuit, too much EGR. EGR valve too open in relation to reference value. EGR valve circuit not enough EGR, EGR valve too closed in relation to intermittent the reference value EGR valve circuit, EGR valve electrical circuit intermittent pre post heating relay EGR solenoid valve sticking EGR cooling function integrated into the engine control unit open circuit or actuate the malfunction okay right so first of all we'll just record those so we've recorded those now a lot of these faults will be old so what we'll do is we'll just clear these down and take the car for a drive and see what the first faults are that come back and that will give us a better indication because there'll be a lot of old codes here. Okay, so the car was cleared down and straight away, just as soon as starting, the depollution system fault came back, the engine management light came back and scanned the car and we have these faults P0489, P1162, P0405 and pointing to EGR circuit too much EGR EGR valve too open in relation to the reference value EGR solenoid valve sticking of the valve whilst driving even though we haven't driven it and EGR valve circuit low EGR repeat raw signal so we need to one go and have a look at the EGR or this first fault code the P0489 the reporting of too much EGR now this will be picked up also maybe from the air mass meter that not enough air is being sucked through the air mass meter which will give this fault code of that the EGR valve is too far open because that's the only place it can really get any any different kind of air into the engine from um, so that's the two things we need to look at here so let's pop over in the engine and um, have a look okay so we've opened the bonnet and removed the top cover here just by lifting it up and we can see that the EGR uh, circuit the airflow comes in here and it goes down behind the engine so it's going to be around here at the back down there somewhere 
the EGR valve so we're going to remove the wipers we've removed one here already so you just undo this 16 here and hold the wiper arm not here hold it here and just push up and down up and down up down up down until she wiggles off and then undo take this panel off then there'll be some screws holding the lower panel on on the edges here remove those and then hopefully the panel will come out the top panel is off and over here we need to undo this one 10 mil these two Torx 20s they look like to remove the brake fluid reservoir and then we'll push these two clips here out like that and then lift and this bar should come off okay so that bar is now out of the way now we need to remove this air filter intake pipe from here and then from back here it all just pull, pulls out and then we'll undo the turbo intake pipe from here undo this pull these clips out here for the breather system they break very easily there's one on the top one on the bottom be very careful just lever them very gently undo this plug here for the air mass meter and undo this clip here and back here for the air box we need to undo these five mil allen key bolts one two and maybe there's a third one down there and then the air box will come up and then we'll be left with the lower air box which we shall have a look how to remove once we're in there okay okay so we've got all them pipes out the way we've removed the air box top cover and now we're left with this bottom one which with one hand let's see how she comes out with one hand get you out of the way there you go air box out look very nice I've seen worse now so it's very black just there now that's an indication that something very dirty has been getting in just there let's have a look what's there anyway Okay, so I've got my torch. Let's have a look back there. And, okay. Oh, there it is. So, because the air box was loose and not fitted in there properly and not secured, that's the EGR valve. So we have, where it's been rubbing on there, we've got a hole in the EGR valve there. And where it's been rubbing on the connector as well, we can see that the connector's beginning to wear away but the connector's okay seems like there might be some corrosion there so let's just take this off the connector doesn't look like any corrosion in there no okay so let's get the CGR valve out see 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 what we can do So what we'll do is we'll take the EGR valve out. So there's three. Looks like E, maybe E6 or E8, one there, one there, and one underneath this bracket here. Now to remove that bracket, which holds a fuel filter, what we need to do is that clip there. We just need to squeeze that that way and pull this up there she comes so there's the fuel filter out the way and then we'll open one two three eight mils they look like and get that bracket out of the way so we can get down to the EGR 
and just check if anything's blocked, broken, because it's reporting a circuit fault, so there should be, now it's either drawing too much load, meaning it's blocked or stuck or something, so let's take it out, let's see what we find. We, we can already see there's a hole in the top of it, but let's see what else we find. Okay, so we have removed the motor for the EGR valve, And now what we can do is we can see if that rod moves freely, which it does. That moves up and down. So it turns up and down there. You see that rod? To open and close the valve. Right, and that's absolutely turning freely. So there's no blockage or rubbish down there. Um, maybe the motor is faulty so now we'll plug the motor back in and we'll do an output test with the diagnostics and see how it goes we are with diagnostics um, in the actuations so we're going to press start and it should activate this valve and let's see what happens okay Cool. So now it says that it's ended. The actuator is operational if the test complies with the description given in the help section. Okay. Now let's check EGR butterfly solenoid. presume that's going to be over here somewhere as I cannot see anything else on a solenoid back here or anywhere in this pipe Or on the EGR cooler, I can't see anything that's electronically operated. Over here, that's the inlet coming into the inlet manifold. I can't see anything there either, but let's see. Let's actuate it and let's see where the noise come from comes from. I believe that noise came from here. I can hear it clicking, I'm just trying to feel where it is. Seems like this unit here. So what we've got is that EGR valve motor is not working all the time, it's intermittent as the fault codes were a lot of the time intermittent. So now what we're going to do, we're going to remove the whole EGR valve, um, which will you will need to remove that clip there so if you just put um, a screwdriver underneath it from this side from the underside of it or a pair of cutters from the side and just lever it and this will come apart it's a reusable clip do not bend it um, and one eight mil there and another one on the bottom just uh, there and then this will pull out that way and up. 